Hello there, my fellow Imperial Scholars, and welcome back. Welcome back to another entry in our series known as Imperial History. Since I have already gotten multiple requests for today's topic, I decided it was finally time to engage in it. The topic itself is none other than the infamous Black Crusades. Now, you might wonder why is this topic in Imperial History and not famous campaigns and battles? The answer to that, unfortunately, is elusive even to me. The best I could think of is that, since Famous Campaigns is a weekly series, it would take a very long time to cover other things I might want to talk about. Also, there is a pretty thin line between Imperial History and Famous Campaigns. Because, after all, all the Imperium's wars are part of its history, right? As far as today is concerned, we're not gonna go into much detail on particular Black Crusades, but only give an overview as to what they are and how they come to happen. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? A Black Crusade is a military campaign unleashed upon the Milky Way galaxy when the forces of Chaos manage to unite under a powerful Champion of Chaos. They then proceed to launch a massive offensive from their base within the Warp Rift called the Eye of Terror, against the worlds of the Imperium of Man. This term, Black Crusade, can also be sometimes used for other incursions by the mortal and demonic servants of Chaos out of the smaller warp rifts existing across the galaxy. Commanding one of these campaigns is often considered the greatest reward that can be bestowed upon a mortal servant of the Chaos Gods. Successfully achieving the stated objective of one of these campaigns can result in the ultimate reward, ascension to the rank of Demon Prince. The most devastating Black Crusades have been led by the War Master of Chaos and Commander of the Black Legion, Abaddon the Despoiler. He is the self-proclaimed heir of Horus, who has led multiple Black Crusades against the Imperium. The most recent of these was the 13th, in 999 M41, the largest and most successful of them all. The first Black Crusade occurred in the late 31st millennium, several centuries after the end of the Horus Heresy. Utilizing the region of space around the Eye of Terror, known as the Cadian Gate, Abaddon led the combined forces of the Chaos Space Marines against scores of Imperial worlds, and was responsible for millions and millions of deaths in the first week alone. Multiple worlds were lost before the Imperium could launch an effective counter-assault, and although the Black Crusade was ultimately defeated, the Imperium was forced to heavily fortify the surrounding Cadian sector, transforming Cadia itself into a fortress world. Over the course of the intervening 10,000 years, the forces of Chaos have launched another 12 Black Crusades. Millions of other attacks have been made on the worlds of the Cadian Gate by demon princes and lesser Chaos warlords. However, the title of Full Black Crusade is reserved for the times when Abaddon, or another powerful Chaos Lord, is able to unite all the forces of Chaos located within the Eye of Terror. Their overall goal is relatively simple, the destruction of the Imperium of Man. The 41st millennium saw two major Black Crusades. The 12th one, also known as the Gothic War, began in 139 M41 and lasted until 160 M41. It represented Abaddon's attempt to capture the ancient Xenos artifacts known as the Talismans of Vol by the Eldar but known to the Imperium as the Six Blackstone Fortresses. The Eldar themselves allied with the Imperium to defeat the Chaos Forces, and they were successful, although Abaddon escaped with two of the Blackstone Fortresses. The 13th Black Crusade began in 999 M41, and resulted in the largest mobilization of Imperial and Chaos Forces since the Horus Heresy. Despite the valiant defense of millions of Imperial Guardsmen, Space Marines, and the Sisters of Battle, it was not enough. The fortress world of Cadia fell after Abaddon's Black Fleet unleashed a massive assault. The Blackstone Fortress Will of Eternity was deactivated through a combined attack by the Space Wolves and an attack by the Imperial Fist Fortress Monastery, the Phalanx. 
However, Horus still used the Blackstone Fortress as a makeshift missile, sending it careening into the surface of Cadia. The tectonic upheaval of the kinetic strike shattered the forces of the remaining Imperial defenders, leading them to abandon the world. The fall of Cadia also destroyed the Necron-built Cadian pylons, which had held the warp rift known as the Eye of Terror in check. This, combined with the growing instability of the Immaterium, as the power of the Chaos Gods waxed, led to the eruption of the Cicatrix Maledictum, the Great Rift. It divided the territory of the Imperium in half, and dimmed the light of the Astronomicon on the side of the rift cut away from Terra, known as the Dark Imperium. In response to the assault on Cadia, the Imperium had stripped the garrisons along its far eastern fringe to reinforce the Cadian Gate, which resulted in a full retreat of the forces of Chaos from the Cadian Sector and produced the current stalemate. However, this weakening of Imperial defenders in the east hastened the onslaught of Tyranid High Fleet Leviathan and the latest expansion of the Tau Empire, until it was brought to a halt in the Zeist campaign. The steps of a heretic on the path to glory are inevitably shaped by their attitude towards the Chaos Gods, and especially their patron, or lack of one. This is as true when their footsteps shake the galaxy as it was when they first set out in service of the gods of chaos. A war master serving corn does so by bringing about a black crusade that drowns the galaxy in the blood of open war, while one serving Tsinch advances his forces according to an inscrutable agenda. Each of the chaos powers directs their servants towards a unique path of conquest, fitted to the particular gifts and stratagems they favor. No less deadly are the patterns plotted by the Unaligned, for anyone who can claim the title of Warmaster without the backing of a Dark God must be a power in their own right. Much like a compact, a Black Crusade can be dedicated to one of the four major Chaos Gods. However, the Dark Gods are jealously protective of the work of their champions. As such, a Black Crusade can be only dedicated to the Chaos God to which the Warmaster or the majority of the heretics are aligned. If the Warmaster is unaligned or the heretics do not have a common alignment across the majority of their group, then the Black Crusade cannot be dedicated to a specific god. A Black Crusade doesn't necessarily need to be dedicated to one god in particular, but an aligned Warmaster risks upsetting the other powers. The Tide of Blood This is a Black Crusade dedicated to Korn, and it is a brutal campaign of slaughter across countless worlds, leaving behind little more than gore-soaked soil and the mountains of piled skulls. The Campaign of Subversion This is a crusade dedicated to Slanesh, and it barely resembles a traditional war at all. Although planets fall before the invading presence of the Warmaster's hosts, they do so thanks to the subversive influence of cultist networks and the allure of witch-spoken words. The Advance of the Inevitable This is a crusade dedicated to Tsinch, and it appears to pick targets at random. The Architect of Fate allows his champion to strike not only at current strongholds of his enemies, but at their future selves as well. Seemingly insignificant targets become linchpins in a battle plan, spanning time as well as space. The Triumph of Decay A crusade dedicated to Nurgle fights not only with weapons and armies, but with one of the most basic principles of the universe, entropy. The vanguard of such a war effort is not just soldiers and ships, but plague, despair and decay. The armies of Nurgle play the long game in battle, knowing that all things crumble in time. With a little help from plague ships and some judicious sabotage, the enemies of the Fly Lord starve in their fortresses as they find their supply lines become a vector for new corruption. Although the favor of the Dark Gods is important to a Black Crusade, no War Master can hope to do battle in the Material Realm without armies and fleets. The heretics might have been able to assemble such resources over the campaign, or they might need to call in debts and favors, and leverage their reputation to gather them. Even if the Warmaster already commands armies and fleets thanks to the heretics' previous adventures, it is possible to bolster the Black Crusade forces before it starts. 
There are several kinds of these forces and some guidelines as to how to get them and use them. The Fleets and Landing Fleets The fleets are used for one of two basic purposes. To wage naval war and to deploy forces to a new territory. Existing naval assets controlled by the heretics can potentially grant them fleets at the start of a Black Crusade. A fleet usually consists of at least one powerful capital ship and a small number of frigates, destroyers or cruisers to escort it. Landing fleets have fewer warships and maybe no capital ships at all, but do require many bulk transport vessels to ferry troops and munitions. The Hosts The meat and drink of a Black Crusade are the mighty warrior hosts used to wage planetary war. They may be the elite forces of the Chaos Space Marines or primitive barbarian tribes, but they all share an appetite for blood and slaughter. Existing military assets controlled by the heretics can potentially grant them hosts at the beginning of a crusade. Some particularly powerful assets can count as multiple hosts. In general, a host can be anything, from a few veteran squads of traitor legionaries, several hundred disciplined soldiers, or a thousand strong rabble armed with nothing but improvised weapons and fanatic zeal. A small group of armored fighting vehicles or even demon engines can also count as a host. The Cults Chaos cults within the Imperium can be used to weaken the defenders through sabotage and corruption. They can prey on supply lines and weaken the resolve of a planetary population. The Cabal The strength at arms of a Warmaster's armies may be supplemented by the powers of the Warp itself, if he has access to Cabals with which to call them down. Cabals can be groups of sorcerers, weirds and ritualists who wield the power of chaos to assist the battles of the Warmaster. And finally, the Lieutenants. While the Warmaster's will binds together the forces with a common goal, he cannot inspire, terrorize and maintain discipline in every place at once. For that, the Warmaster relies upon so-called Lieutenants. These can be subordinate champions of chaos who have sworn service to the Warmaster in exchange for a share of the plunder and the glory of the Black Crusade. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Black Crusades for today. Or at least a short overview of them. I will also talk about individual Black Crusades in future videos. Word to the wise though, some of these Crusades are more detailed in the lore than the others. So I will probably end up covering multiple ones in a single episode too. Are you a fan of the Black Crusades? If you were a Chaos Champion, how would you plan one? Feel free to show us your tactical genius in the comments below. Was this episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for more content. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all an awesome day. The Emperor Protects.